You have everything in digital form. You can do plagiarism detection and you can do scrambling of the assignments, which basically means um, instead of giving them like tasks one to 10, you change the order around. And so if they look to the student next to them, um, they have a completely different order and it's much harder to cheat. So um, Min will now talk, no, oh, I forgot the university, of course. So the university is, of course, also a big part of the process. And first and foremost, the university have legal certainty. And um, I mean, recently with the general data protection regulation, um, we cannot just use any services which are um, offered by, for example, US companies, even if they have their service in Europe, um, there's no real certainty. Um, then uh, the university wants, of course, that no data leaves the university. Um, we need to have um, archivability. So exams need to be archived for up to 10 years. And the university um, wants, like all in all, a well-defined process because of the legal certainty. And um, the university um, needs to handle the deployment. So they need to give you the infrastructure for digital exams because you need to provide people with computers. And you cannot just put them in a, a lecture room and give them a, a piece of paper. Yes. So now Min will talk about the existing solutions, which there are on the market. Yep. All right. Let's see how I can find a place for all this hardware. Yes, existing solution. If I down, down, down. down. Okay. The other one. The other down. Ah, there we go. So uh, first, we were looking into the platforms on which we can manage courses. Um, here on the, at the university, we have uh, we use Elias and Layer. Um, these are basically the places where courses, material, and PDF, and all information about the, the, the class are uh, stored. Uh, the issue is that they do not usually comes with uh, auto grading functionality. They do not have a common assignment format. Um, there's not usually support for, as far as we know, there's no support for coding assignments. And everything has to be done through an online uh, portal, which means it's difficult to conduct examinations, because you have one to have, uh, to, you want to limit the network access for students during this time. Uh, on auto grading, uh, as you can see from our little list here, except from NB Grader, everybody uh, else is closed source and with a paid service, which is not uh, what we're looking for because we would like to incorporate our research uh, into better automatic grading of uh, uh, assignments. And let's look at the research that we're conducting in the context of the project. Uh, the goal of our research in general is for, first of all, improve education, and this can be done by automatically giving feedback with auto-grading. And what this means is that instead of a student doing assignments and wait for a week for the teaching assistant to have time to grade and return the feedback, they can just see the button, they give, get back a grade, and ideally also links that uh, link to the materials that will show them where the mistakes that they have. And also, additionally, there's also uh, the benefits of learning at your own pace. So if you can give individual feedback, auto automatically generate individual feedback, then the students are also able to uh, maybe take a little more time or can go quickly in the curriculum and complete the study faster. Uh, <clears throat> and the second goal is, uh, of course, with automat automating the grading process, and you can reduce the amount of time for each of the teaching assistants and spend on uh, grading the repetitive assignments. So normally, for example, in WUS, you have 200, 200 students, and then you have five TAs, and you have to grade how many assignments uh, uh, along the, during the semester, and then the exams. Then by automating this process, you will allow the teaching assistant and professors to evaluate, spend them giving feedback to more complicated tasks, and also to actually supervise the students. And what can we auto-grade? So the, these are the levels of assignments that we uh, kind of uh, divide our 
the this is how we usually divide. Uh, this is how we uh, divide the levels of uh, difficulties and assignments. The level one and level two are pretty self-explanatory. First one is have uh, just multiple choice or single value. There's no un unambiguous solutions. The second level is code exercises, which can be done uh, simple code exercise that can be tested with simple unit test and this basically just return true or false. Level three and level four are a little trickier. So level three uh, definition concepts, uh, questions that may have, may differ in, uh, in the actual exact answer, but they can be uh, tested against a general, but general uh, terminologies such as definitions, equations. And level four is the most difficult that does not have any unique answer. And an example is that level three question would be define what a cat is, and level four would be describe your uh, favorite type of pet. So there's no clear answer for that. So here the research at the university is focused on the level three for short answer grading. And uh, if you want to have more information about what the details of the research, then you can come to us afterwards and we'll be able to speak more. That's, that can be done in an entire different talk. So yeah, in order to test the research that we do at the, with the short answer grading, we need a platform to test it on. And this is how we have been doing it so far. So we have, so, so, um, uh, we, have we use Jupyter Hub, uh, which is the central server side uh, application. And uh, it's managed the Jupyter Notebooks and uh, NB, uh, Jupyter Notebooks and the user access. So basically, a student log into the Jupyter Hub server. They will see the Jupyter Notebook view, which is basically a JSON-based format that allows for interactive coding, and it has both text and code cells. And the teacher that log into the same Jupyter Hub will be able to view NB Grader, which is a Views that have functionality for grading and giving feedback. And BigRadio is an extension of Jupyter Notebook, and all three are um, open source projects. So here is a view of a Jupyter Notebook. You can see here is the text cell, and you can edit and, all, uh, edit and preview the text cells, and then you have the code cell where you can execute code. And for the NBGrader view, we have they have the cells to, to give to grades here, the actual answer of the students, and the place also to give feedback. And you can also see here for the code uh, segment, you can do unit tests, raise asserts, and all that, and this will be hidden from the student during the exam. So, so we choose to use Jupyter Notebook is because it's a natural way to combine visualization, code, and description documentation of the task in one single document. It gives the student the ability to, to, to give students the markdown, text cells, and code cells, which can, so, okay, so the combination of visualization, code, and documentation is done through this markdown and text cells, and code cells. And they are built around open source components, like Tornado and CodeMirror, and uh, because the way of the way that the kernel is designed, you can have many different languages. It's originally built for Python, but I think at the last time I checked, there's at least 150 different programming languages that are supported by Jupyter Notebook. It's interactive. You can do all of this as you during the examination, all the coding, testing. And uh, it's very easy to extend because of a relatively well-documented extension API. It's and be greater is an extension of Jupyter Notebook, and it's also open source. It has some basic auto grading functionality with the assertion that I've shown you before. It uh, can automatically generate the feedback and the grades of the entire notebook afterwards. And uh, however, it is by because it's an extension, it's a little difficult to extend upon extensions to to um, give it more functionality. <coughs> And the, there are several challenges that uh, come with using this Jupyter Notebook and uh, Jupyter Hub and NB Grader together. So the first one is security. Uh, the, 
there's a uh, ability for Jupyter Notebook to access the terminal directly, so you can run commands uh, like remove root, for example. Of course, you, this can be restricted with uh, some level of uh, security, but then you can also access uh, file system, and this is uh, rather insecure. And you can do the same thing through programming language, through, for example, in Python, you can do OS import path and all that. And the other problem is that uh, even if you hide the buttons as a way to send command with a JavaScript console. And this kind of inspires to maybe eventually leads to containerize all the Jupyter notebooks or Jupyter app instances. And yeah, to basically, to, to basically reduce the risk of the security. On the, the second challenge comes from usability. usability. So the creation of assignments are uh, not very intuitive for non-coder. Uh, yeah, this, if you see before the assignments, is, you need to hit this buttons over here or this button to add a cell. Yeah. This, uh, yeah. And uh, it's not straightforward to set up the infrastructure of Jupyter Hub and uh, Jupyter Notebook and all this together. It's a lot of uh, knowledge and configuration that you have to run and uh, which leads to motivation for us to maybe have a user interface, graphical user interface to do this instead of open up the Veeam or something to edit all the configuration scripts. And with that in mind, we will show our results and come back to team. So uh, thank you. So um, let's look at the results. So this is the history of uh, digital exams um, which we conducted in our master's uh, courses. And uh, we started in 2012 with merely 15 uh, exams. So 15 students taking one exam, which is here MRC, which is uh, Mathematics for Robotics and Control. And then it grew over the years, and last year we had this big red block, which is Wahrscheinlichkeitstheorie and Statistik, or um, Probability Theory and Statistics, with 120 students taking the course. And during the semester, everything was already done um, using this infrastructure. And um, let's look at what um, we gained by using, actually, digital examinations. And uh, we had a serious reduction of grading time. So for this class, we had 120 students and only two graders, and um, they submitted on Friday at 3 p.m., or they actually started on Friday at 3 p.m. and submitted um, at 5. And uh, the upcoming Wednesday at 10 a.m., they had um, their grades and their feedback and everything was done. And if you ever studied at a university, you might know that this can take up to six weeks or sometimes even longer. So. Um, this is a huge selling point, I think, for, for this kind of digital examination. And uh, we have to keep in mind only 50% of the questions were actually auto-graded, so the graders had to manually grade all the other questions. So another result uh, which we got out of um, conducting all this is um, that we have a rather well-defined examination process. Um, so in the beginning, we generate uh, user accounts for the exam, which are one-time accounts. We switch the whole network in a PC room um, to an exam network, which is not connected to the internet and basically a demilitarized zone. Um, then the students log in with the one-time uh, account, solve the assignment. Then they submit and um, then they receive a hash code. So in the end, um, the hash code um, is a checksum of what they submitted which makes sure that um, in the end they can um, prove that nobody has um, tampered with their assignment afterwards. So when they receive a grade, of course, if you have uh, a written assignment, you can always go to a handwriting expert and they can tell you, okay, you wrote this part and someone else wrote this part. But with um, digital data, it's of course uh, a lot different. Um, then afterwards, um, they write down this hash code for them to take home and the submissions are collected and the network gets switched back to the normal mode. So maybe more on the hash code. So in the beginning, the users get, students get this kind of sheet. So it's the name, um, this is just another ID, and this is the username they get, which is the one-time username with a simple password. So they can actually choose any place um, in the lecture room. Um, 
And then in the end, they will write the hash code here and the timestamp. And we actually have two versions of that sheet. One will be signed by them and given to us. So they actually um, confirm that everything is correct. And the other one is for them to take home. So afterwards, um, when they look into the exam, weeks after it has been uh, conducted, they can say, OK, this is actually my exam. And I'm fine with um, the feedback. And um, this is how it would look like in a notebook later on. So you get a timestamp. And you get a hash code, which is, of course, rather small. So um, it doesn't take up too much time to write it down. Right? And um, what we also did is um, we extended the software we use. So for Jupyter Notebook, we wrote a bunch of extensions, which are all uh, available on GitHub. Um, so NVGrader or Jupyter Notebooks, they only have code cells or markdown cells, which are text cells. And what we uh, did was a new multiple choice uh, cell type, which is easy to use, which I will show you later. Um, a restricted view for the students during the exam, because like in the beginning, this Jupyter Notebook is very powerful. You have a lot of buttons. You can change the order of cells. You can delete cells. And of course, you do not want the students to actually get rid of the task in, a, in an exam. Um, so we restricted everything. And we have like a, a toolbar where we can actually attach um, tests. So in the exam, the student could click on a validate button, and then what they wrote gets tested. Right? It's not, it will, of course, not be like a full test, but more like a small test where you can say, OK, is the function name correct? Um, do you have the right uh, input types? And is the output of the right type? And maybe some simple examples just to make sure um, that the students get some feedback already during the process. Um, then we also um, extended NB greater. So what we did in there was this hash code generation. And we have a new task view for grading, which is just an, an easier view for the graders because um, usually every grader gets to see the whole notebook. And what we wanted to have is that every grader just sees like one single task and then can grade all the single tasks um, of all the users. So basically they say, OK, this grader has to do the first task and does it for all the graders, which is um, also important because you have consistency. So if you would have two graders grading the same task, then you will always have um, different grades, if only slightly. Um, yes, then uh, another thing we made is uh, this peer grading, which uh, Min developed. So uh, in peer grading, the idea is that students actually evaluate themselves uh, instead of a teacher doing that. And we do ordinal peer grading, which means students get um, a bunch of answers, which I will show on the next page like this, so they get like five questions and five answers, and they can drag them up and down to, to bring them in, in an order which they think the, the best one is on top and the worst one is in the bottom. Right? So they do not even have to give points because we found out that um, there's much discrepancy between actual points which you assign to a question or an answer, but uh, basically there's always a consensus about um, in which order it is. So if one quest answer is actually better than the other, this is easy to tell, but to tell by how much it is better is a bit harder. And once um, a sufficient number of students rank these answers, um, we get a ranking out of it. And then we can say, OK, this is for the same question. This answer has a score of 0 0.75. So this must be the best answer. Or at least the students think this is the best answer. And we use or plan to use this system to prepare students for oral exams, because then all these questions could come up in the oral exam, and they already can train with some answers and give some feedback to each other. So um, since this all was rather dry theory, um, we would like to show you a demo of uh, how all of this works. And I hope it actually does work. So let me check Is it this one. Yes. So, oh, are we here? Yeah. So this is basically the view that the grader gets um, when they log into the um, Jupyter Hub server. So I'm not showing how to log in and everything because this uh, machine does not have a lot of uh, memory, and uh, you should do it like on a more powerful machine. And um, then they have here a file view. And here they have the form grader extension, which is NB grader. 
And what they can do is you can say, okay, make a new assignment, which um, let's just give one, All right? We call it whatever. Foscon. We can give a due date or a time zone um, to specify in what time zone that due date actually holds true, right? And then we just save it. We have this new assignment, and now we need to um, basically make the actual assignment. So when we click on it, we get this view, and we have to create a new Jupyter Notebook, which is here running on Python. And in the beginning, you just see not much. So maybe we should call this, I don't know, this could be the first task with an underscore. And um, this is a cell. So in the beginning, we can choose between code cells and text cells. So in a text cell, I'm just going to make this like a markdown cell where we can say, OK, task one, um, please write a function to produce or that calculates squares. The square of a number. And then we can click on it and then it gets rendered nicely. And then in this one, we could now give the solution where you just say, okay, just give a square function, a square, and, and then return n squared. Fine, and here we could then give a test where we say, okay, assert that, I don't know, square of two is actually equal to four, right? And this test runs fine. Um, but we have to um, actually activate this cell toolbar to make sure that NBGrader knows what the cells mean. So we go to the create assignment and then we can say this one is just a read only cell because it's just a description. It gets this ID, which is, um, randomly generated, then you can say this one should be an auto-graded answer because we wrote a test for it. And this one should then be the auto-grader test. Now the problem is that you actually need to put something in here like test and then the cell ID of the one before. And um, so it's not very good in usability. So what we came up with is um, this task presets. So we can just say, okay, I want to have a short answer task. Then we just give it a name, like task one. Click on okay. And automatically we get two cells, which are, um, already have the right IDs, have the right cell types and everything. And um, I think I even prepared one from before. No, we can also put multiple choice in there. And multiple choice is actually interesting because it looks like a markdown cell. And you just give it some list options where you say, I don't know, option three. And if you render it, well, just click run, then ha, ah, nothing works. Well, then I think we skip this part for now because this is still a prototype. Um, but what we can also do, let's now say we made this task in a nice way. Now we can save it and reuse it later. So we just say new task and say it shows us which cells belong to the task. We can say, okay, this is a task is named square. Then we click okay. And we can see here the IDs are not really very nicely and they're actually not working because here we have um, the test part and it should have the cell ID. But if we now import the task from here, and give it, then we click OK. Then we can see it actually makes sure that the IDs are all correct. So this is basically an extension which we wrote, which makes the, it a bit easier to work with it. And in the end, you could also have, let's say, a task database for one class. And you could just easily put them in. Um, now here, you would also have to give how many points this is worth. So let's say this is worth 10 points. And then we just save everything and would go back to this form grader view. And in the form grader view, we would now click generate and we get the student version of this assignment, which we could look at. Um, but I actually prepared one before, which is a bit nicer to look at, which is here this test exam. 
where I made like tasks like this. Um, and this test exam, so we will look at it from the student view later. Um, he would actually generate it and then the student would log in, can pull this assignment and let's look at what the student view looks like. So the student view, where are we here? Student view looks similar, but we don't have this form grader part up here because it's just for the grader. And then the student would just open one task and then we can see all the buttons go away so they cannot actually change the exam. You could not, um, you cannot even do it with all the shortcuts. Um, and it has like a nice visual indicator which tells you, okay, this is actually a cell which you should um, edit and where you should do something with, where your solution comes in. So this is already filled out, right? But usually this would be completely empty. And so it would, in the beginning, it would actually look like this. There's always an indicator where it says your answer here. And for students which are not familiar with um, Markdown and how it works, you can actually click the edit button to make sure here you edit it and the preview button to preview it. Um, then when they, they can go to the next task and everything gets saved. So let's do that. If we go back, we can say everything is still saved. Let's put the correct solution in here. Review. And then let's say here we have a coding task for the student. And they have this little nice run indicator where they just write like a function. Please write a function that returns the sum of squares. And then as a next task, we have a multiple choice task, which maybe works. Yes, exactly. So this is what actually the multiple choice looks then like. So you can just, it's very intuitive. You just click the right button. Um, then you save and then um, everything gets submitted. And um, then we would go to the um, view of the teacher again. And we can see, okay, for this test exam, we already have two submissions. So let's click on them. And um, we see here the name of this one. Here we don't see the name. And we just click auto grade in the beginning to run all the automated tests so that we do not have to grade them. It gives you like a very, gives you a log output. You do that for the other one too. Okay, and then it tells you already, so they already have a score of uh, 10 of 30 points and it says it still needs manual grading. So this one would also tell you if everything is already graded because um, it checks, for example, if the student has not edited a cell, um, then it will automatically assign zero points to it. So now let's go to the manual grading part. So we click on our test exam and we can now see we can grade task one, two or three. So it says task two actually doesn't need a manual grade because it was the auto graded one. So let's click to the task one. And we can see both submissions. So submission one, we can see find the closed form. We can see this is the answer. We have buttons for full credit or no credit. And this is actually the correct form. So we give them full credit and we tell them, well done. Right? And uh, this automatically gets saved in the background too. And then we can just look at the next submission and see what they did. And we can see in the next submission, they didn't do anything. Right, so um, we do not, do not even have to grade this because if we would look back here to task one, um, we can see there is no check mark for need manual grade. So it already detected, nobody wrote anything in there, so it doesn't give any points. So we would then go to the second one, which is auto graded, click on it, see it, and we can see here this is an answer, this is a test, the output of the test is actually appended, but since there is no output because everything ran nicely, um, it already assigned full credit. We can still click on that, but it doesn't matter. And then we can go back and look at the last task. We can see both need manual grade. And this one no, does also not work yet because it's a prototype. But yes. The rest works. So this is basically like a, 
short overview of um, the software and our modifications to it. So um, we've been using this for the last, let's say, three years and have been uh, starting to develop our own extensions for it um, last year and already have uh, a bunch of them out and you can all find them on our GitHub. Um, so since this is all open source um, software, we like to give, of course, um, our extensions back to the community. And yes, it looks like we're finishing a little bit early. So then thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. You're all afraid to pass these exams. <laughs> okay. Hi. Um, Hi. Is there some partial grading? Because, for example, if you do this auto grading of the test, how what should be the output of the po uh, program? does not mean that the program is written good because you can write it in one liner or 10. Yes. So is there something detected about this? Or? Um, so for now, this is just testing the output. Um, and I mean, these tests just give true or false, but you could actually adapt the test to give um, a number between zero and one and then could say, okay, this is 80% correct or 50% correct. But to actually check how well written the program is, um, this is like a whole nother story. And we're not really interested in, uh, in that when it comes to these coding tasks. So it's more about that the solution is correct. And then, of course, in the feedback, we could look at it and then say, OK, this is not well written. Maybe we deduct uh, eight points. So you can always adapt it with manual grading. Yes. Um, are the students using their own laptops? Or do you have a um, PC lab with 220? Yes. So we, we, we had problems in that we do not have that many computers and the tests needs to be done at the same time for like two or 300 people. Yes, um, so that's a good question. We actually do not allow students to bring their own hardware. We have um, those PC pools, which are rather small. So we have 30 uh, places in them. And what we did, we actually did it in batches. So we let them have the exam after each other when it came to this exam. And um, we did it in, I think, five rooms at the same time. So of course, um, there is a limit to this. And in the future, it would be very nice if students could just bring their own hardware. But it's always the question how much you can control that and how much you um, make them cheat with that. So uh, we also recently got um, new laptops, or we'll get a bunch of new laptops. and. Um, I think the idea is more that you should go towards thin clients like tablets or something which is very cheap and then everything would run on a centralized server and they would just log in and maybe get access to a virtual machine. So this is the plan and then we could even use Raspberry Pis on the, which are stuck on the back of the screen. And then I think at least um, the money would not be the issue. But of course, it's always an issue to find big enough rooms. But that's also the case for the normal written exams because the number of students is growing and growing. And we sometimes have exams here which are conducted in the Mensa, the big lecture hall, this lecture hall, all the ones around. And so you have to always um, check for which um, kind of exams you can actually apply this. Yes. Yeah, I may add, we have uh, examinations with more than 300, 400 people doing the examinations and we are trying the uh, digital examination now with uh, between 50 and 100. And 120 was. 120 uh, was the wahrscheinlich exam, statistic. Yes. statistic. Okay. So the, the idea is university has several PC pools, not only in the faculty of computer science, also in other faculties, to put them all together in a virtual network and then try to use them all simultaneously. But it is a problem. Yes, and may I add that we kind of developed it for our own master and we only have 20 to 30 students in each batch. So, um, yes, so for us it's a little bit easier, but now the interest is growing in the university for this. Other questions? Yeah. 
Um, so I was wondering, are there feature requests by the people who are using it, like bookmarking student answers or something? Um, like so there are a lot of um, feature requests um, by the TAs which are using NBGrader. Um, and uh, we also have our own feature requests, but the problem is we're not quite sure if that software is going in the direction we want it to have because um, as Min mentioned earlier, we are trying to do this short answer grading and we're actually conducting a lot of master thesis and research projects on it. And we would like to, to have an easy way to apply our research in there and maybe write new graders. Um, but yes, there's always a, a lot of feature requests like from other universities for this NB grader. And um, of course, from the TAs and professors here so, for example, this task view, which uh, I developed, was, was a feature request where people just wanted to see one. And we're trying to uh, implement them as far as we can. Anything quite interesting in the list of feature requests or just normal um, stuff? So, <laughs> by, by our professor, of course, the feature request is that we actually have short answer grading. So that people give a definition question and we have, well, not really auto-grading, but assisted grading, where maybe already uh, words are marked, which are, um, which have, um, which are important. I, I actually might have a picture for that, which can show something, which it might be, so this is, might be a bit overcrowded, but let's say you have like student answers, and then you could say, okay, please. Hmm? Can you zoom in to the picture? Oh, zoom in, yes. So let's say these are student answers to, to a question. doesn't really matter what question it is. And then you could say, OK, um, for the, the grader, you mark the words which are important in green and maybe the words which are um, not that good in red. So this is a prototype. So these do not really mark the nice ones. But here in the middle, uh, we have like a very long answer and the um, it's compared to a master solution, and the master solution actually says, oh, so let's first say what the question actually is. So the question is, what is the prototype program, and what is its role in problem solving? And someone gave a very long answer. And um, the master solution which was given was, uh, it simulates the behavior of portions of the desired software product. So it immediately in the middle found this part and then says, okay, this is all probably very relevant and the rest is not that relevant. So you, as a grader, you could focus directly on the important part. And we plan to actually extend it in a way that you could then say, okay, this is actually not an important word or this word should be important to, to give some feedback to the auto grader or the um, machine learning system in the back. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? No, I don't see any more questions. Then I may thank you for your talk. Thank you. And uh, thank you for your addition.